Hey, I'm going to kill the dervish. <laughs> hey, listen, you're coming in, right? Yes, I, I'm driving it. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. I'll see you then.
Greetings, everybody. Sanab, I allowed you to talk. Yes, sir. Good day, sir. Welcome, Sanab. Why don't you introduce yourself to the rest of the panel? Okay, sir. Right now? Yeah, go ahead. What's your name? Where are you from? Okay, sir. We've got um, a couple of minutes. Good day. Good day to everyone. My name is Zainab. I'm from West Africa, the Gambia. The next question is, where is Gambia? <laughs> Gambia is in West Africa. Yeah, it's difficult because uh, we're used to hearing Gambia before, right? Wasn't that another country? Yes, we also have a country called Zambia. The Zambia with a Z. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. What is he? Well, uh, My country is one of the smallest mm -hmm. country in the continent. Yeah, the like Vatican, I think, is the smallest country. Mm -hmm. It's considered a country. Okay, I'm getting a late start here. No one's here. <laughs> no speakers are here, anyway. Yeah, we're doing it a little different. Normally, we let people in the panel, but we'll keep letting the, just the speakers only come in. Speakers and the hosts. Okay. But I don't think it's a difference for you, Zanab, right? Because you can still talk. Yes, sir. We just finished the conference uh, from Pakistan a few minutes ago, so I think we may get again getting a mm -hmm. little later start. Okay. So, how are things with COVID? You're part of the world, Zanab. Yeah. Um. Currently, we're not using the face masks. You only use it at the hospital. I had uh, that if you use it outside, you'll be sanctioned or you have to pay some money. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I think the rate is really going down. We, don't, we have few new cases basically. Okay. Okay, uh, Mu Janam, you have a question? You have a chance to ask it right now. Okay, I saw the email. I will write some of my okay. questions. Okay, so there's someone else my... asking a question, Janam, but I was just trying to answer it. Because you can hear me okay, right? You're, you're... Can you tell you're not in the panel? at all or is it the same Hello, mauricio i'm letting you in There's Mauricio. Dr. Ben, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? 
Fine, 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 fine. You good. Uh, Nora's gonna moderate this. Okay. Yeah, she. Uh, you know Nora. She's done a lot of these. But we just finished the webcast and everyone's late. <laughs> we did one from Pakistan with Anila Darbar and a couple other presentations. No, we're not finished. We're just starting. We're about to start, actually. Yeah, we're waiting for for Dr. Guilherme. Yeah, Noor and Dr. Rebus, I believe. Uh, yeah, we're just letting people in uh, in the panel that are panel uh, hosts or speakers. Usually, I let everybody in, but uh, I'm doing this a little different. We're gonna be a few minutes late, folks. See, you got the link okay, Mauricio, right? Yeah, yeah. I came through through the email. Through the email oh, link. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think I put the right the right link. I hope I didn't put the wrong link. Okay. Uh, yeah, I must have. Screwed up the link, okay. Okay, we're we'll getting together.
We've got a few people waiting. I think Dr. Noor is between the uh, the assistants already. She's in here. Yeah, I think she is. Okay. Oh, there she is. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're a host. You can also admit people, but uh, please admit the people that are speaking, like Borba and uh, Rebus. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, in, no, I, I'm not a co-host yet. Yeah, no. Are you here? She dropped off again. Trying to admit you, Noah. Soon might be acting up again. I can't get her in. Noah, can you hear me? I'm trying to promote you, Noah. I think it's your connection that's not letting you in. I'm trying to promote you. You might have to reboot and come back in. Sorry, folks, we're going to get a little start, late start. Oh, we're through Goels here. Okay, great. Dr. Goel can give us a lecture while we're waiting. <laughs> Hello, Noor. Hi, John. Hello, Atul. How are you doing? I'm very well, John. What is the news from you? What is the good news? Well, we're trying to get this going a little, little late start, and we had a webcast before mm -hmm. uh, from Pakistan with with ICU care from Dr. Darbar. Uh, now, which one is this one? This is that Borba's one or what? No, this one, yeah, this is Dr. Borba. He'll be joining us in a few minutes, and we're just trying to get Noah over here. Uh, Abby's here. Hello, Abby. Are you here? Just give me a second. Uh, Hi, John. Call. How are you doing? I'm good. Now, I hope you both are coming to China tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a, what, 5.30 your time? Yeah. 5.30 p.m. Dr. Well, Dr. Sa, good morning. Nice to see you. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Fine, fine, fine. You? Thankfully. Yeah, Atul just made a tour of South America. <laughs> I was in Brazil, in Colombia, and now I'm going to Argentina very soon, to Buenos Aires. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you went there to was Bogota, a... I went to Rio. Yeah, in Bogota, it was the WFNS Congress, and then in, in Rio, the school base run, right? Yes, 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 yes. You were uh, there? No, 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 no. I, I, I'm next to it. I, ha I have to study, so. <laughs> <laughs> no can go through the frontier. Yes, yes, don't worry.
Okay, we're well, still waiting for Noah here or Dr. Rebus. Oh, Noah, you're here. Noah, can you unmute? Noah's here. She has the key, but then we've locked the door. I think she'll come back shortly, Dr. Bennett. Yeah, she's in the panel. You see her, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, she's ready. Yeah, she's here. But I think she, she may have not very good bandwidth because she's not unmuting. Anora, can you hear me? It says in the chat that she's going to be joined by shortly, but she's keeping her Zoom logged in. Okay, in the, uh, oh, in this chat? Yeah. Okay, she's joining shortly. Okay, just hang in there a few minutes. Sorry, folks, we're a few minutes late.
been away. Well, Norse, not answering. Dr. Goel. So that our viewers Yes, John, I'm here. Well, uh, do you feel like doing an impromptu uh, presentation? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm ready if you are ready. Well, yeah, I, I can't see Dr. Rebus. I can't communicate with Nor. Nor is. Uh, I am working on arteriovenous malformations. You want me to give a smallish presentation on AVMs? You can give a quick one if you want. <laughs> how, how, how long is it? Uh, if you want five minutes, I can give five minutes. If you want five oh, no, hours. No. You, we, yeah, we want, uh, uh, well. You want to wait, John? Actually, let yeah, us wait. We'll wait, a, yeah, wait a second here. Yeah. But yeah, if you could give like a half hour, 45 minute presentation, that would be great. Uh, but it looks like uh, we're not going to connect here. And I appreciate you filling in like this. I, I, know, I know you're always ready to teach. <laughs> <laughs> I will be happy to take. The place, my dear John, if you okay. want me. Sure. Yeah, I don't think this is going to happen. No, it's not answering. And Dr. Rebus is not answering without, nor I can't get a hold of Dr. Rebus. Okay. Yeah, I think we'll. Okay. Okay, I'd like to introduce uh, Atul Goel. He doesn't need an introduction. Uh, he's willing to fill in here. We had some communication problems with Noor in Pakistan, and, and Atul has generously offered to give a presentation, a half hour, 45 minutes. And uh, okay. welcome, Atul. My dear John, thank you very much. And I wish I want you to just wait for a few seconds to get, let me get my bearings right. Sure. And then I'll be sure. back with you very soon. Okay, okay. John? Yeah, no. Okay, that sounds good. In the meantime, if you are able to connect, I have no problem. Uh, looks like it's not going to happen. Yeah, let's go ahead, uh, Atul.
John, I am hunting for my presentation. Just give me some time, okay? Yeah, okay. Okay. Because you know what? I am actually... Just a minute, my friend. No. Potato, okay. yeah. Okay, John, I'm ready. Yes, okay, Atul, we appreciate you filling in and uh, thank you. Just a minute, just a minute, John, just a minute. Yeah, for the audience, we thought we'd have Dr. Rebus, Dr. Guillermo Rebus from Brazil, but there was some kind of communication problem. So Atul Goel, a noted uh, neurosurgeon from India, is going to fill in. Thank you, Atul. Okay, John. John, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I wanted to talk on arteriovenous malformations, but my presentation I'm not able to get. So I'm going to talk on a very beautiful subject of my great interest, and that is trigeminal neurinomas. Can you see, John? Yes, we can see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Trigeminal neurinomas are... Uh, very fantastic tumors. They are the, you know, the skull-based surgeons really like these tumors because the surgery is very philosophical. Surgery is very dynamic. You know, it is it has to be done properly and the results are absolutely fantastic. Provided you understand that you cannot damage the trigeminal nerve. You see, you have to save the trigeminal nerve fibers. That is the bottom line of this operation. If you operate on trigeminal neurinomas and damage the trigeminal nerve, you can create a very big hypoesthesia on the face, and that can be actually quite harmful, and that may be a negative result. So that is the bottom line of trigeminal neurinoma surgery. So trigeminal neurinomas are relatively rare tumors. In neurinomas, like acoustic neurinomas, other neurinomas, in neurinomas, trigeminal neurinomas are only second to acoustic neurinomas. And they are rarely associated with NF2 or neurofibromatosis. So that are the key things, that they are relatively rare and they have to be understood properly. Like acoustic neurinoma, when you operate, you have to understand the facial nerve, you have to understand the eighth nerve, you have to understand the anatomy. Similarly, when you operate on trigeminal neurinomas, you have to be philosophically very strong in understanding these tumors. 
So in the year 2002, you can imagine about 18, 19 years ago, I presented my series of 73 cases in 2002. And in 2017, my series was about 260 cases. And now my series is almost 300 cases. So this is, there is no question that this is the largest series in the world. And on the basis of that series, I am going to present, give my presentation. So try this article of mine, 2002, was the first article in the literature where we actually said as a series that you can improve the sensation of the fifth nerve. It was never discussed, this improving the sensation. We were always talking of, you know, the question of improving was just mentioned in case reports, but as a series, this was the first article. Second thing that was very important in this article was that trigeminal neurinomas arise in the region of Meckel's cave. That was another very important thing that was discussed in 2002. The third very important thing that was discussed in this article was that trigeminal neurinomas remain within the dural confines in the lateral wall of cavernous sinus. They are not intracavernous. They are in the lateral wall of cavernous sinus between the dural confines of the lateral wall of the fifth, of where the fifth nerve is located. So that was another beautiful thing in this article. So this is the region of trigeminal nerve and the cavernous sinus. You can see third nerve, fourth nerve, sixth nerve, V1 division of the trigeminal nerve, V2 division of the trigeminal nerve, V1, V2 are in the lateral wall, V3 goes, is not in relationship to the cavernous sinus lateral wall, it goes from the foramen ovale before the lateral wall. So this is the cavernous sinus, these nerves, third, fourth, fifth, are located in the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus in the dural confines. And also when there is a tumor in the trigeminal nerve, that, that tumor respects the dura and remains within the dural confines. It does not transgress. So that is the beauty of trigeminal neurinoma, that it remains interdural or within the dural confines, does not go outside. It does not come in contact with the venous plexus of the cavernous sinus. So it is outside the cavernous sinus, and this has to be understood if you want to beautifully remove this tumor. So trigeminal neurinomas can be in the middle cranial fossa. You see in the middle cranial fossa, and this is completely within the dura. The question is about the posterior fossa component of the tumor, where exactly it is located. In the year 2002, in my article, we had said that this part of the tumor is like acoustic tumor and subarachnoid in location. And this part of the tumor is interdural or within the dura. So that is the anatomy. So middle fossa is a very important component, of very important location of trigeminal neurinomas. This is trigeminal neurinoma located in the posterior cranial fossa. Whether it is located in the posterior fossa or in the middle fossa or the extracranial, middle fossa component is almost always present. That is why we speculated like acoustic tumor arises from the internal aortic canal. Similarly, trigeminal neurinomas arise in the Meckel scale. So that was the thing. Very frequently, these tumors are dumbbell shaped like this one. So middle fossa component and posterior fossa component. So we had said that this part is subarachnoid in location, but subsequently we modified this view and said that even this posterior fossa component is or can be frequently, not always, interdural or within the dura. So this interdural location is more commonly identified when the tumor is multi-compartmental. Like if the tumor is having three compartments, like middle fossa, posterior fossa, extracranial. When it is extracranial, it is almost always, this part is interdural. So this anatomy was not known about 20, 25 years ago. 
And I have no hesitation to say that understanding of this anatomy has completely revolutionized trigeminal neurinoma surgery. So this, they, there can be various kinds of dumbbells. You see here, like these kind of dumbbells. And about 25, 30 years ago, these tumors were not even, you know, because MRI was not there. So these, it was difficult to diagnose these tumors and difficult to treat these tumors because we didn't know whether it is trigeminal neurinoma or whether it is how is the, uh, the relationship with the internal carotid artery. Only MRI could have given that diagnosis. So introduction of MRI, introduction of skull-based techniques have given a scope to identify and beautifully treat these dumbbells. So even these large dumbbells, you see, it can take this beautiful shape. And many of these tumors are soft, necrotic, some are cystic, so they're not very highly vascular and they remain within the dura and this posterior fossa component is a question where sometimes it remains interdural and sometimes it remains subarachnoid in location. So you see these kind of dumbbells. So I'm taking you to the world of trigeminal neurinomas. Less frequently, these tumors can have extra cranial extension, like in this case. You see the tumor is extending along the V1 division. This is along the V1 division. So we had reported this for the first time, lacrimal nerve, trigeminal nerve, along the V1 division of the trigeminal nerve. And in the V1, there is a look. Tumor is always located in the region of the Meckel scale. This is along the V2 division. You see, these are teeth, and this is along the foramen rotundum and goes in the infraorbital foramen. This is the trigeminal neurinoma. You see the extension along the foramen rotundum extracranially, and this is extracranial extensions are relatively rare, but they can be seen. This is along the foramen ovale. You see from the middle fossa, the tumor is coming out from the foramen ovale, and this is the tumor. So in our series, when we had our, uh, analyzed, majority of the tumors were type A or middle fossa type. Some were po predominantly posterior fossa type. Some were having extracranial. These were dumbbell-shaped tumor C type and D-typed is when there was an extracranial extension. So trigeminal neurinomas are beautiful tumors of various types. You see, this is a small tumor, and this is a huge tumor. So they can be small in size, they can be huge in size. And when they are small or when they are big, the symptoms are relatively typical or characteristic, numbness in the division of the trigeminal nerve, motor affection in the mastication muscles are common features in trigeminal neurinoma. So it can be small, it can be huge. It can be very huge. So if you see many of these tumors are huge, soft necrotic tumors, quite large in size, but large or small, this, this part of the tumor is always interdural. And if you understand that concept that this is within the dural confines and this is a soft tumor, you can do a very quick job and very rapid resection of these tumors. Soft and necrotic, you can just use your suction or juice or whatever you want to use, break the tumor. And ultimately, as I mentioned, that the main target in this operation is to save the trigeminal nerve. You cannot damage the trigeminal nerve fibers. So most important thing in these operation is learn the art of breaking the tumor, learn the art of demolishing the tumor, learn the art of resecting the tumor without coagulation. And that is minimum coagulation or no coagulation in these kind of tumor. And you can do quick job and I will say, I don't remember how long I took in this operation, but you should not take more than 45 minutes to remove this tumor. There is no question about it. So they can be huge dumbbells. You see this beautiful dumbbell shaped tumor. So what I'm trying to show is no matter how big these dumbbells are, this part of the tumor is always interdural. 
and majority of time even the posterior fossa component of the tumor is interdural and you can see the soft and necrotic component of the tumor you can do you can come from here open the lateral wall work within the dura work within the dura break the tumor demolish the tumor demolish the tumor and then come on the petrous apex, which is eroded by this tumor, and then work in the posterior fossa component in this direction, and you can do a very beautiful resection without any question. So majority of tumors in my series were very huge, more than six centimeter in quite a large percentage of tumors. These tumors can be multiple cysts. You see, there is a white cyst, there is a black cyst, and uh, like craniopharyngioma cyst is multicolored. So similarly, trigeminal neurinoma cyst can be multicolored like this. Of course, we have a very rare occasion, but you see here it is multicolored. There can be a fluid level in these tumors. You see, there is a fluid level. And when there is a fluid level, there is a chances of recurrence of these tumors become quite high. And we must remember that. So fluid level and trigeminal neurinomas, when we see, we must remember that this is relatively easy tumor, easy, I should not use the word, relatively quick and safe tumor to remove. But there are chances of recurrence in these tumors with cystic fluid level is much higher. And you have to remember that. Now you see this trigeminal neurinomas with multiple cyst fluid levels. There is fluid level here, there is fluid level here. If you carefully see, there is a fluid level in the even in the middle fossa component of the tumor. So these tumors are relatively straightforward. You open the lateral wall, work within the tumor. There is tumor is little bit, there is fluid and in the wall of the tumor, there is reddish tumor, more necrotic, more cellular, more aggressive. So these tumors are more aggressive tumors. This tumor, you see, if you carefully see this, there are multiple fluid levels in this tumor and multiple fluid levels, multi-cystic, multiple fluid levels. So these are relatively straightforward and to remove, but the chances of recurrence in these tumors is much higher than otherwise. Bilateral tumors are relatively rare, but when they are present, they are more often associated with NF2. When there is NF2, there is bilateral tumor, and there is one small, one big. In NF2, obviously, you have to understand when to operate, when not to operate, because this patient may be having several other tumors in his body. So you don't have to operate all these NF2 patients. This is another NF2 patient. You see there is a trigeminal neurinoma and there is a kissing acoustic tumor. You see how big is this? And this patient had hardly any symptoms of both trigeminal and acoustic, except for marginal ataxia. So these are slow growing body adjust, brainstem adjust to these tumors and slow growing the body accepts these neurofibromatosis. So you have to operate when you have to operate and when you have to operate, you have to know that very carefully and beautifully. You see, this is another NF2 patient where you can see there is a seven nerve neurinoma on this side. There is a trochlear nerve neurinoma on this side. There is trigeminal neurinoma associated. So trigeminal neurinomas can be associated with various tumors in the body. Ossified trigeminal. You see, there is a trigeminal neurinoma with ossification. These are extremely rare for kind of tumors because more often they are soft and necrotic. Ossification in trigeminal neurinomas, we identified only in four cases in our series. So these are rare. You see on CT scan, there is ossification. And this is a case of NF2. Trigeminal neurinoma associated with another retrobulbar tumor. You see there is an orbital tumor, retroorbital bulbar tumor, and there is a trigeminal neurinoma. So trigeminal neurinoma can be associated with other tumor. So this was hemangiopericytoma, and this is trigeminal neurinoma. And this was a vascular hemangiopericytoma that was removed as a first stage surgery. And then as a second stage surgery, this trigeminal schonoma was removed several years ago. This patient, I have got a follow-up for more than 20 years. And both these tumors, the patient is absolutely doing well. And we have to know that if you can remove it, you can give new life. 
More often, these tumors are in the middle age group, 21 to 40. This is the age group where these tumors are more common. So it is very important to diagnose these tumors on the base of, basis of clinical features, characteristic clinical features, symptoms of trigeminal nerve like numbness and in the distribution of the fifth nerve and wasting. So these numbness and wasting, these are predominant symptoms. So sometimes when you are operating on a tumor in the region of cavernous sinus, you are not sure that whether it is trigeminal neurinoma or whether it is a meningioma. So you have to be absolutely sure that you are operating on a trigeminal neurinoma. So trigeminal neurinomas, these are very characteristic symptoms, predominant numbness and predominant wasting. So when you see these two symptoms, this is a trigeminal neurinoma. Other symptoms, if there is um, pain in the region or um, any other nerve affection, then it is not a trigeminal neurinoma. We identified in our series four cases of these kind of dumbbell tumors, trigeminal neurinomas presenting with pathological laughter. So this is a another very rare symptom, but not so rare as you can imagine when I present, if I have a series of 100 cases and if there are four patients presenting with pathological laughter, it is quite a number of cases. So we have to know about this symptom, pathological laughter. Another thing is it has characteristic anatomical relationship. So this is the beautiful trigeminal nerve which my colleague had given me this dissected specimen. And you see, this is the trigeminal root. This is the gastrin ganglion. Then it divides into V1, V2, and V3 division. This is foramen ovale, foramen rotundum. This is superorbital fissure. And it is covered by a thick layer of dura. Surgery. Now, of course, we are concerned more about surgery on trigeminal neurinomas, which we have to do. As I mentioned, these are very relatively in skull base surgery, they are relatively easier tumor to operate and favorites of skull base surgeon. So, and we, but as I mentioned to you, there are two or three things very critical in trigeminal neurinoma surgery. <clears throat> One is that you have to understand the dural anatomy, that these tumors are interdural, these tumors are located in the lateral wall, that is one thing. Second thing you have to understand is that in the surgery of trigeminal neurinoma, you have to save the trigeminal nerve fibers. If you are not able to save the trigeminal nerve fibers, the outcome can be quite devastating because numbness in the region of cornea can lead to corneal ulceration and you can lose your eye. <clears throat> so this surgery, as I mentioned, surgery for these kind of tumors was not very often done are understood in the year 1992. So about 30 years ago, I operated on this tumor. At that time, the anatomy was not clear and we were not understanding how these tumors can be removed and all. So these tumors, I operated myself in the year 1992 in two stages. So you can see first I removed the middle fossa component and then I went posterior fossa and I removed posterior fossa component. So this was total resection in the year 1992. This was another tumor in the year 1992. The larger tumor in the posterior fossa was removed first and then the middle fossa component of the tumor was removed. So in 1992, two stage operations were done. But as you can see, there is a cystic component, necrotic component. These tumors are very fantastic tumors to operate. Learn the art of breaking the tumor, learn the art of demolishing the tumor, and you can do a beautiful resection in these tumors. But as we understood the anatomy, as we went further in our understanding of trigeminal neurinomas, surgery on the middle fossa component play with the dura and posterior fossa tumor play with the dura and arachnoid. But ultimately, we realized that the dura is very frequently present in the posterior fossa component of the tumor. <clears throat> so this was my slide, which I made in 1992. Like this, this is interdural. Carotid artery is displaced by the tumor. Cavernous sinus is displaced by the tumor. It remains within the dural confines of the middle cranial fossa. This posterior fossa tumor is intradural. 
and frequently interdural. The other beautiful thing that you have to see is that the trigeminal nerve is displaced on the dome of the tube. And these fibers have to be saved. So you have to identify a safe corner where to enter and then debulk the tumor, debulk the tumor, and you have to remove the tumor. So I have said two or three important things. One is characteristic symptoms. And second is characteristic radiology. Third thing is characteristic displacement of the trigeminal nerve. So these are characteristic features of trigeminal neuronal. So this was the first article that we mentioned about surgery of cavernous sinus tumors by an extradural route in 1997. So this was the paper where we talked about intracavernous sinus tumor by an extradural approach. Of course, this is not intracavernous. Trigeminal neuronomas are located outside the cavernous sinus. And many of these techniques have been discussed in my book, which was published in 1996. And I, this was reprinted twice and very popular book during those times. In my book, we have mentioned about dura and mother dura and how we have to respect the dura during surgery. And this was this sentence I have used in my lectures at least 200 times. And many of you who are hearing me must have heard this uh, respect for the mother and respect for the dura or the membranes. Now you will, I want to just show you a very beautiful technique which I presented in 1995. I don't do this now, but I presented this. And you can imagine my understanding about dura in 1995. You read the title of this paper is Infratemporal Fossa Interdural Approach to Trigeminal Neurinoma. So in 1995, I presented this technique where I am standing like how we do transpinoidal surgery. These are the hands open the Meckel's cave, work within the dura. So when you have, you diagnose these kind of tumors but on the basis of clinical observations and on the basis of radiological observation, then you identify that this is trigeminal neurinoma, and then you can minimize the approach. So these kind of tumors in 1995, about 25 years ago, or 30 years ago, when I, when I had presented this series, these tumors were considered impossible operation. Cavernous sinus tumors were not operated frequently during those years. Even now they are you know, considered and they are difficult. But you can imagine in 1995, I operated on these tumors without a craniotomy, just open widely the metal scape. And this was paper, as I mentioned, I don't use this technique anymore, but this was the understanding. And I will show you some of the paper, some of the uh, cases during those years in my article. You see, this was a smallish tumor. I removed it without craniotomy, just widened the foramen ovale. Also, you must know, you see, this is from my same uh, publication in 1995, where the tumor is extending in the posterior fossa, and I have done just widening of the Meckel's cave, and I have removed both middle fossa and posterior fossa component without doing any craniotomy. So this was the, on the basis of dural understanding. And this was another case from that where we have done without craniotomy. So you can imagine, you can do this tumor resection by minimizing the exposure. Now I don't do these kind of things. I make. I will tell you what I do now. Similarly, I have to tell you that this is another tumor like we had published this article on oculomotor neurinoma. And we had said that oculomotor neurinoma arises from the oculomotor cistern and it opens up the dura. So it remains within the dura, this this third nerve tumor, like trigeminal neurinoma. So this interdural location, the tumor arises here in the region of oculomotor cistern and as it grows, the dura covers the tumor. So you can imagine these tumors can be quite difficult for anyone to, but if the third nerve symptoms are predominant, if you know that this tumor is within the dura, 
you work within the dura, demolish the tumor, demolish the tumor and save the third nerve. You see this patient after operation, the, there is some tumor remaining here, but this patient has preserved, it has never been reported in the literature on preserving the third nerve function or improving the third nerve function after surgery. You can see this is a third nerve neurinoma and there is a clear presence of dura around the tumor clear presence of dura. So you come, open the dura lateral wall, work within the tumor, work within the tumor, and you can save the fibers of the third nerve. Similarly, we said about C2 neurinoma. C2 is the largest ganglion. C2 ganglion is the largest ganglion of the spine. And next to gasserian ganglion, it is the largest ganglion. So we had studied in 2008, my series on 60 cases of C2 ganglion, where we had said, and also this is in the year 2008. Then we presented another series of 50 cases in the year, about three, four years ago, in the year 2016. So you can see my series, 60 cases here and 50 cases here. So on the basis of this series, we said, that C2 neurinomas are like trigeminal neurinomas. They arise in the ganglion of the C2 and they remain in the interdural compartment of the C2. Like trigeminal neurinoma, interdural compartment. So there are, this is the, this is the trigeminal neurinoma you can see. This is the C2 neurinoma. This C2 neurinoma is interdural here and intradural here. This is what was my con con uh, concept in 2008, like trigeminal neurinoma. You see here, this is intradural and this is, this is intradural and intradural. But as we progress, we said that even this component of the tumor is intradural. Believe me or not that these kind of tumors, if you understand, you can remove these tumors without laminectomy, just go lateral wall, open the lateral dural wall of this tumor, work within the tumor, you don't have to expose the vertebral artery. This tumor can be removed in quick time and many of these tumors can be removed in 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Break the tumor, break the tumor. And when you are operating on C2 neurinomas, you can even sacrifice the nerve roots like you cannot do in trigeminal neurinomas. So these tumors are completely interdural, open the dura, work within the tumor, work within the tumor, and you can remove these tumors in very quick time. Like trigeminal neurinomas, C2 neurinomas can also be bilateral. They can have, this is C2 neurinoma, this is trigeminal neurinoma. You see how similar these tumors are and similar is the surgical philosophy of removing these tumors. Another beautiful tumor we studied was, you see the title, interdural location of facial nerve neurinoma. You see this tumor is facial nerve neurinoma these arises for the first time we actually mentioned that they arise in the region of geniculate ganglion. And when they become big, they, re they respect the dura and they remain within the dural confines. So if you come from here lateral, just open the lateral wall, work within the tumor, work within the tumor and save the region of the facial nerve and there is a possibility, I'm not saying that we preserve, but there is a possibility of preserving the facial nerve function. So these are, this dural anatomy is very critical to understand and remember. Similarly, similarly, you can see how I love dura and how I have used dura in my surgery. These are lower cranial nerve schwannomas. And we have said in my article that lower cranial nerve schwannomas, particularly these multi-compartmental types, are also within the dural confines. Open the lateral wall, demolish the tumor, work within the dura, learn the art of breaking the tumor, learn the art of demolishing the tumor, learn the art of respecting. And even the posterior fossa component in multi-compartmental um, lower cranial nerve neurinomas can be present within, can be within the dura 
and you can preserve the lower cranial nerve function. And we presented for the first time probably in the literature that you can improve the lower cranial nerve function if you work within the dura. Of course, you have to do mastodectomy. You have to know how to do transpetrosal approach. You have to know how to expose the extracranial component of the tumor. You have to know how to expose the intracranial. But that exposure apart, this understanding the dura can make your surgery beautiful and can make your surgery quick, can make your surgery safe and can make your surgery result oriented and you can improve the trigeminal nerve function, uh, low cranial nerve function. Now regarding trigeminal neurinomas, I, you see in 1996, we, I presented this article my incision was like this for trigeminal neurinomas and also for pitrocleival meningiomas and also for chordomas. I used to take this kind of incision, a reverse incision. And you see, I elevated the temporalis muscle anteriorly. I did resection of the roof, root of the roof of the zygomatic uh, bone roof of the condyle, roof of the external ear canal, partial mastodectomy. So this kind of exposure was used first time in the literature where a subtemporal craniotomy incorporated mastoidectomy and the basal extension of the middle fossa approach. You can see beautifully here, this is subtemporal craniotomy. Temporalis muscle has been retracted anteriorly. This is the basal cut just using saw root of condyle, roof of external ear canal, some mastoidectomy. I must say I don't use it now, but this is what I had described in the about 30 years ago. And this was my exposure after, and you see this is the trigeminal nerve. And then I took lateral dural incision and worked in this area. So you can see this was my exposure. And this was, con this is condyle, this is external ear canal. And this was my paper on trigeminal 18 cases I did at that time, but now of course I don't do it. Now I take a very smallish, I split the temporalis muscle, do a basal temporal craniotomy over the, over the trigeminal nerve, over the metal scape, and then basal and take my bone cut right up till the metal scape, and then do extra dural exposure first, open the dura and work within the tumor. You see these kind of tumors are quite beautiful surgical operations. You see the soft necrotic tumor. I don't remember this case, but this patient, this operation should not take more than few minutes, uh, maximum 20 minutes. But more important than time is learn the art of breaking the tumor, demolishing the tumor, understanding the tumor, understanding the location of the tumor. And I have repeatedly said, that in this tumor, you have to save the fibers of the fifth nerve. You work in the lower, from the lower quadrant of the tumor, the trigeminal nerves are displaced more often on the dome of the tumor. And first remove this, work outside and save the trigeminal nerve. That is the beauty of these cases. This is another tumor. You can imagine these tumors have been my life and I have already mentioned my experience of near 300 cases or more than that, work within the dura, come from inferior direction, demolish the tumor, demolish the tumor, don't coagulate unless it is very much forced upon you. Very infrequently you have to coagulate in these tumors. More important is to save the trigeminal nerve fibers. Tumors which are in the middle fossa, you can have a more anterior perspective, more anterior, and then extradural work within the dura. You see, this is the tumor, and you see how it has eroded the tumor. I have not done any pitrosectomy, and you see how it has eroded the anterior clinoid process. And how, you see these benign tumors, they become large and erode the bones, and you have to then work, don't have to do any pitrosectomy in these tumors, you have to come in this direction. And I have to also tell you that when the tumor is located primarily in the middle fossa, you can come extradural. However, when the tumor is going in the posterior fossa, you can come extradural and intradural. But if the posterior fossa component is quite large, you can work 
intradural first open retract the temporal brain and then come intradural and then take an incision on the lateral wall and then come in this direction and then work within the tumor there is superior petrosal sinus here that has to be handled and taken care of and if you have to you then you have to ligate the superior petrosal sinus this is another beautiful tumor as i mentioned trigeminal neurinomas are skull based surgeons most favorite tumors and you can remove these tumors beautifully and fantastically you see this is another dumbbell that i have removed beautifully these are very old cases of mine and i have to only tell you that trigeminal neurinoma is a favorite tumor of mine where you can remove these tumors in beautiful fashion now i have to tell you another thing when the tumor is cystic and necrotic like this the chances of recurrence become higher than the tumor which is solid tumor when the tumor is soft and necrotic and cystic of course you can do a quick fire job you can do complete exposure of the posterior fossa component by working within the dura under the superior petrosal sinus but if required you can then cut the superior come intradural cut the superior petrosal sinus and you get a beautiful exposure you can work over the petrous bone and this part of the bone is already eroded by the tumor you can see and then you have to remove this tumor you see here this tumor is in the middle fossa there is a nub in here now this nub in is also there is a dural covering here you must not think that this part of the tumor is is within the dura or going into the cavernous sinus no it is within the lateral dural wall of cavernous sinus work within the dura break the tumor break the tumor save the trigeminal nerve it is possible to save possible to not only save but improve the hearing of course there can be damage to the trigeminal nerve because they are intimately related but if there is a damage you have harmed the interest of the patient and in our subject we can frequently harm the interest of the patient in the interest of the patient so this is multiple fluid levels you can see here as i have shown you earlier these are post operative images this is another image so i have got a series of several cases where i can show you some beautiful resections like you are seeing some of these formidable tumors otherwise but if you know that these are you know confined tumors then you can do a very quick and very rapid resection and safe resection and and a result oriented resection you see these resections and this is predominantly in the posterior cranial fossa and i have not sure how i went for this tumor but for these kind of tumors if it comes to me today i will go retrosigmoid and supra cerebellar approach is a beautiful approach for these tumors then i can direct my attention to the middle fossa if the tumor is going in the middle fossa component so this is another tumor you see these are post operative images and i am showing you some of these very formidable tumors now this tumor was operated earlier by somebody and then there is a cyst and there is a recurrence in this tumor and this is another recurrence in this tumor where we operated now a beautiful article which i recently published was even when there is a recurrence of the tumor this tumor remains within the dura and that recurrent tumor is also intradural location this is another fantastic observation and that can you know make your surgery very beautiful so this is a, another recurrence of the tumor which had been operated and then we removed it again this is another tumor you see predominantly posterior fossa component where i removed from i think i removed it from the supra cerebellar avenue but you see the post operative image beautiful tumor now i will talk about extra cranial extension when the tumor extends extra cranially so dura is present even in the extra cranial component of the tumor and you can operate by doing craniotomy you see how i have changed my exposure now i can do cranial approach to extra cranial tumor so this is a reverse skull base approach skull base is 
For a cranial tumor, you go, do not open the head and open the skull base. But here, to remove a skull base tumor, I have done a craniotomy. So this I had mentioned in my article on this subject, where for this tumor, I had done a small middle fossa approach, craniotomy, and then come in this direction. And this dura will be present around this tumor and you can save the carotid artery inside the cavernous sinus, outside the cavernous sinus. So very, very important to know that dura is going to be present outside, dura is going to be present inside, work within the tumor, don't violate the dura, carotid artery can be saved and they need not even exposed in these kind of tumors. These kind of multi-compartmental tumor you see, the entire tumor can be removed by a small craniotomy and multi-compartmental tumor can be resected. So, you know, this presentation, I have uh, some beautiful cases on trigeminal neuronomas, but John, I will give a detailed presentation on updated presentation in, on, in some other lecture. And uh, I hope you and the participants enjoyed this presentation on trigeminal neurinoma. And if there are questions, I will be happy to answer. Uh, that's great, Atul. I, I like the attitude of filling in when someone can't show, a real team player. Okay, so uh, please uh, take this opportunity to interact with Atul. So uh, anybody have any comments or questions? Welcome to Yes, Kashi. I have a question. Yeah, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Martin. Yes. yes. Kashi, well, yeah. I, I, have, I have also had uh, this experience with these layers, but uh, especially C2 neurinomas, and we did far lateral and went all up against the brainstem. But you could actually separate it within the, this kind of layer. Um, now, uh, would you please comment how important the dissection technique is, especially the fact I also do not use uh, coagulation. And, and this is, you know, when you're more junior, you're always afraid of hematoma and that. And when you don't use coagulation, you can properly distinguish all uh, the, the tumor tissue from, from the normal tissue. And also please comment, how thin is the dura? You're talking about this in the pituitaries, which, which I yeah. find is, is really, uh, a, a very, very important thing. So please comment. Yeah, that is very important. You see, there are two things which I have mentioned. One is understanding that there is dura. Okay, that is one. The dura will protect you from the vertebral artery, from the carotid artery in the cavernous sinus. So that dura has to be preserved. It may be thinned out, but it is there, that dural protection. Like in pituitary, I mentioned, I have no hesitation to say that understanding the dural anatomy of pituitary tumors has completely revolutionized pituitary tumor surgery. Similarly, I have no hesitation to say that trigeminal neurinoma, understanding the dural anatomy that I have mentioned, you see 25, 30 years ago, nobody knew what is trigeminal neurinoma. Nobody had any experience on trigeminal neurinoma 30, 25, 30 years that you will understand and you will agree. At that time, nobody knew where, where is the dura and where is cavernous sinus and what is cavernous sinus surgery. Many, very few people knew about it. So to understand, and I had presented in 1995 my concept of interdural location of trigeminal neurinomas. And there is no question that this has revolutionized trigeminal neurinoma surgery. So this understanding of dura is important. Second thing is learning the art of breaking the tumor, learning the art of understanding and demolishing the tumor. That is very important. You see, if you go on coagulating, go on coagulating, you will, as I mentioned in my article, in my presentation, that many of these C2 neurinomas can be removed in 15 minutes. Many of these trigeminal neurinomas can be removed in 25 or 30 minutes. Break the tumor, break the tumor, break the tumor and coagulate, if at all, wherever at the end of the operation. If you go on coagulating throughout the operation, you will certainly damage the trigeminal nerve fibers and you will not be able to, you know, complete your operation. You may take hours and hours to remove this tumor. So it is important that if you depend on coagulation a bit too much, 
then the surgery becomes, uh, you know, lengthy and the surgery becomes difficult and you can lose out on various important critical anatomical fibers that are present. And dura is significantly thick in trigeminal neurinomas and significantly thick in C2 neurinomas and significantly thick in oculomotor schwannomas and significantly thick in lower cranial nerve schwannomas. So it is important to understand and respect this dura if you, are, if you wish to remove this tumor safely, radically, and quickly. So that is my answer. Yes, very nice comment, and thank you for making everyone uh, aware of all of this. And also, similarly, maybe you want to comment on the importance of something my teacher, Yashagil, always emphasized, you know, the, the importance of the subarachnoid layers in, in retrosigmoid approaches to acoustic neuromas. It's very, very important not to, um, uh, excuse my English, not to screw those layers up. I mean, you really have to preserve them and then go into the tumor, then you will have, then you will be able to identify everything. You don't even need neurostimulation. You will, you, you will find most of the time what is normal, what is nerve fiber, and, and what is actually tumor. Please comment. Peter, uh, I have studied, as you, as I have a little bit briefly mentioned, that trigeminal neurinomas arise in the Meckel scale. Oculomotor neuronomas arise in the region of oculomotor system. Lower cranial nerve tumors arise in the region of jugular bulb. So these are the things we describe for the first time in the literature. They were never mentioned. You show me any literature, they have never been mentioned. Of course, there is a big mention about acoustic tumors. Acoustic tumors arise in the region of internal artery, meatus, and canal. Now, you know, I'm still studying the anatomy of acoustic tumor and the relationship of membranes, you can imagine that in my presentation, I did not talk about acoustic tumors. And I am not yet convinced as to how the dural membranes are related in cases with acoustic tumors. And I am studying. Maybe I have not been able to finally come to a conclusion as to how the dura is displaced and how the tumor is how the subarachnoid membranes are displaced around the tumor but i can tell you one thing that many of these acoustic tumors are located in the subarachnoid space all right but many of these acoustic tumors also have a big significant chunk of dura around it so this is i will come with my final conclusion i am working on it and soon i will come with this article but you must remember that acoustic tumor also has a covering which may just be simulating a dura. And the understanding this dural membrane and acoustic tumors can be a, quite a um, sensation, but I cannot give you my firm finding. And needless to say, and you, of course you have to respect the subarachnoid space, respect the membranes, respect the how the facial nerve is located on and how it is, in which plane it is, and how the uh, eighth nerve is located, in which plane it is, you have to understand it very clearly if you have to save these nerves. Okay, I, I believe okay Harsha... one last question. What is your favorite instrument for these <laughs> kind of dissection? You have to come to my department. I will show you some favorite instruments, my dear. Okay, you come. We'll spend some time together. I will treat you beautiful Indian food and beautiful Indian Okay, instrument. thank you. I'm very near. I'm in Dubai, so that will be fine. Okay. Please come. come. Please come. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Dr. Harshad Barek, you have a questioning look on your face. I, have, I, know, you, I know you I haven't have, asked one, but you look like you want to ask one. I, I, I can't dare to ask questions to Atul. <laughs> <laughs> He's the encyclopedia of neurosurgery. Thank you, my dear Harshad. You are a good friend. He is and... the one. I must have heard him so many times. Every time I find his new thing coming up. Now, new thing which he's teaching me today is that acoustic can be <laughs> dural covering. Yes. I'm really waiting to listen to this. <laughs> yes. See, until yes. I find out something new from you. Thank you, Harshad. And I'm happy that you, you are present in so many of my lectures and you were present you know, in the full lecture, 
beautifully removed uh, very astonishing and, and I, I'd like to uh, watch uh, to visit Mumbai uh, someday so I'm very interested in uh, your instruments of your OR system um, so um, to remove all the tumor so uh, the sometimes the uh, nerve is very compressed and very thin so to preserve the nerves very hard so uh, in your um, technique. So, uh, I want to learn your technique and uh, use uh, how to use those instruments. So I'm very interested uh, in your instruments and the manipulations. So I want to visit um, Mumbai someday uh, <laughs> to learn. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. My invitations for you stands. And Harshad Parikh will also be happy to see you. 100% okay. Takashi will be happy to welcome you. Ah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're uh, interested in uh, Indian uh, cuisine and Korea, so <laughs> also uh, studying uh, the Indian <laughs> Korea. So, uh, thank Curry you. Thank never you. worry. <laughs> you, you know what? You know what tool and uh, we Takashi and I have a dream of traveling the world to various neurosurgical programs. Yeah, uh, and visiting the cultures and seeing. Right, Takashi, you want to see how. Neuro neurosurgery uh, is taught in that country. Yeah. You're ready to go, Takashi, right? Yes, yes. I want to learn as many languages as possible and uh, uh, speak as many languages as possible and visit many countries. <laughs> yeah, he's learning Spanish from attending the Spanish uh, neurosurgery conferences. Mm, yeah. So any qu uh, questions? Uh, Abby, you want to check in and say hi? <laughs> Atul, can I ask you one question? Yes. Atul, I was doing last month one large uh, trigeminal schwannoma, middle fossa going into posterior fossa. And uh, what I noted, the tumor was so hard. Even the CUSA was not working. I had to cut with the knife. And I must have changed at least 10 blades. Okay. They were getting blunt and cut, cut, cut. They were not calcified, believe me. I don't know, have you encountered such a hard tumor ever? See, I showed in my presentation that I showed ossified trigeminal neuroma. You saw the picture I showed? Yeah, yeah, I saw bilateral, yeah. Yeah, bilateral ossification. So ossification, these tumors can be firm like, a tri you know, NF2, particularly NF2 patients can be quite firm and nodular. You know, they can be hard, you know, you can, uh, you know, in NF2 patients, sometimes if you feel the nodules on the face and on the chest, you feel sometimes they're like bone. So these particularly hard tumors are like in more commonly in NF2 patients and they can be firm and if, but, uh, you know, uh, whatever said and done, the, when there is a tumor of this kind, you have to be more careful because they are slow growing and to save the trigeminal fibers can be more difficult in this situation. And uh, that, is, uh, that is the problem. That can be an issue. Muted. You are muted, Harshad. Another issue is carotid. Yeah. I found that carotid was densely adherent, difficult to separate out from the capsule. So, oh, car carotid is usually, not usually, almost always in my experience, separated by a dural layer. Mm -hmm. And but that has to, has to be, you know, what must have happened because it was firm and you were using knife, their dural layer might have got violated. And that may have been one of the issues in your case, Harshad. Possible, possible. I take your point. Valid. But it was so difficult to cut. Frustrating, frustrating. Good, good, good. Okay, Abby. Thank you. Thank you, Arshad. How are you yes, doing, Abby? Yes, sir. Beautiful lecture. Enjoyed it. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Abby. Oh, Dr. Ferret, do you have a question or comment uh, you want to? 
You look inquisitive. Maybe not. <laughs> no, I, I, I have no question. Okay. Very, 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 very fantastic lecture. I, 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 enjoy, I enjoy it. Thank okay. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Hassan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Anybody else want to comment or have a question? Now's your chance. Zanab, you have a neurosurgeon from uh, Mongolia here. Uh, I don't know if she can speak uh, now, if her connection is that, is that good. And Zanab, uh, a neurosurgeon from Gambia, which is a, a small country in Africa. Zanab, can you talk? Can you introduce yourself and say hello to uh, Atul? Yes, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, really, it's a really amazing presentation of Lana Lot. I am really grateful to be here. My name is Zainab Jalo from the Gambia, West Africa. It's one of the most, it's one of the smallest country in West Africa or Africa in general. Okay, welcome, Zainab. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Zainab, for participating in this program. And I'm happy that, you know, that is the beauty, John, that uh, with, the, with this uh, web-based presentation, it can go deep into the world. The whole, it can go far and wide. And any country, anyone who has internet, which everybody has, you don't have to, you know, spend money on travel. You don't have to come for conferences and you have to, you know, Mori, you are more interested in, you know, listening to lectures rather than enjoying the dinners and all those things, which can not only spend time, spend money. Here you are one-to-one -one and you can ask questions, you can ask. Uh, so this kind of format is here to stay, whether there is COVID or no COVID, this format will stay and will stay for long because it has advantages. I went recently to Colombia and you know, mm -hmm. I have so many people uh, from Latin America knew me, they came and they wanted to talk to me and because of this format of webinar presentation. And uh, I am no, I'm sure there is no question whether there is COVID or no COVID, this format is here to stay and here to progress and here to thrive. And John, your contribution in this is unbeatable and you please go continue this uh, web-based, webinar-based uh, learning of this subject of neurosurgery, where you can see your videos, you can see, philosophies, you can understand concepts, you can talk, you can interact. You see, now I'm talking to Zainab. Otherwise, really? she, would, she would not have been able to, uh, you know, ever hear me or see me ever. Right. Believe me, sir, this platform is a blessing to us because for me, I'm from Africa. Currently, I'm in Moscow doing my residency. Honestly, here is Russian. I do go to the hospital to do my practical work and also learn from them. But this platform is where I learn the anatomy and so many other things like the approach, the literature reviews. Very Almost good, very everything good. that I am learning, I'm learning it from this platform. And I am really grateful and I feel so blessed. I you, know, so. It, you know, it's going to get better at all with the wireless is getting stronger and stronger. And I've seen the last four or five years how it's increased in Africa, India, South America, how the, the signal has gotten stronger and it will continue to get stronger. The wire, that's all you need is a wireless connection anywhere in the world. And uh, next time, John, I'm going to give one presentation on my another subject, which is my favorite. I'm not sure if Harshad has heard on RT venous malformation surgery. Harshad, have you heard me on ABM yes. surgery? No, I haven't heard yeah, you. Yeah, Atul, I've heard you. So I'm going to give that yeah. presentation and update I my I would work. love to see. Yeah, yeah, that is another subject but, of my but great show interest. more videos. Show yes. more videos. <laughs> okay. Yes, please, Arthur. I, uh, I, I, John asked me what kind of presentation I would have given. And th this is something not so spectacular, but, you know, like all these rare tumors and stuff. That is very important for people to know about. But uh, I, I have been presenting in Beijing in 2019 something about 
nerve roots and how in lump and nerve roots would you believe it because it is of great social importance people go in there and they have a very poor understanding of what's going on and they just sort of say oh it's a disc and it's a stenosis whatever and in this day and age of coming uh, endoscopic surgery so it i have with microsurgical skull base techniques, I, I, I'm coming from the skull base uh, side, but there are not so many cases, so I end up doing all these lumbar cases as well. So I, I, I push this um, classification of the nerve root compression sites, and maybe John will, uh, will uh, facilitate this, maybe we can uh, discuss it somewhere else. So that's what I would have presented. The next time, yeah. AVM surgery, okay? Yeah, and most of all, if, if you would like to present, Martin, uh, just I wrote my email in your chat. Uh, just write me. We could set up a talk if you want to give a talk, okay? Sure, okay. I'll do that. I'll do that. It's, it's not that spectacular type of thing, but I would say it is of great social importance because we... We still, in this day and age, we might see recurrences of trigeminal neuromas and all sorts of things. But, 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 but really, uh, statistically speaking, you know, the, the, the lumbar nerve root compressions and, and syndromes, they are very important. And um, still, the concepts out there are not so good. Maybe Atul has some ideas. Probably he doesn't have time because he's operating thousands of cases. So... <laughs> How would he bother about something like that? But anyhow, no, no. thank you. you. Martin, you have to, I have to talk to you on my spine work. You have not heard my, me talking on spine. You have not heard me talking on lumbar canal stenosis. You have not heard me talking on lumbar disc. You have not heard me to, uh, you know, talking on cervical spondylosis. Next time, we will see. Hey, Vlad is here. Hello, Vlad. No, no, Abdul, I know about your spinal ideas, and they're great, and uh, we appreciate it all. And also, I appreciate your pioneering uh, spirit, because, you know, once sometimes you are up against some dogma in the medical community, and it's very hard to convince uh, people that actually something that you observe has really uh, has, has, has grounds to stand on. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Vlad just stepped in. Uh, Vlad, are you there yet? Are you on? Uh, yeah, he just, he just came in. Vlad, can you hear me okay? There you go, Vlad. You're, un you're muted. Muted, Vlad. You're muted. No, no, Vlad, you're muted. You're, I can't hear you, Vlad. can't hear you. Sorry. Oh, there yeah. we go. Please Sorry for being late, but uh, I had another one with ACNS uh, the webinar. Abija, okay. hi. Atul, looking forward to AVMs. I hope <laughs> it will be something spectacular. Yes, yes, I have to show you some AVMs, Vlad. How are you? Everything okay? Everything's fine. Everything's fine. What you said uh, about the webinars, they sure are here to stay. It's uh, incredible invention but we need the face-to-face -face meetings as well both yeah, of course of course yeah he just got back from south america tour uh vlad there was a long one there yeah, was a he, long long well, one well he went to both he went to bogota and rio yes yes vlad was there vlad was oh, very vlad was much both? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah to both oh, okay. there was two two weeks out of prague which was just just uh, what was needed actually <laughs> yeah. You were locked well, too long. Well, you know, Vlad, we have a webinar with China, the China Neurosurgical Journal, and you're you're going to be there, and Atul's going to be there. I, I know about so, it. When is that, John? That's the, tomorrow at 8 o'clock China time in, in the Czechoslovakia. It'll be about 1 or 2 in the afternoon. A.M. Yeah. No, P.M. P.M. In the afternoon. PM yeah, in the okay afternoon. By me. Yeah, and, uh, not really the best yeah, time. Uh, uh, Tool knows, uh, of course, the importance of publications. He's a very public, uh, published author. Uh, Do I understand? Yuha is behind that. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yuha, uh, Yuha and Ben arranged it with the China right. Medical Society, which is big, <laughs> huge. Uh, and Ben and Yuha arranged that because Yuha, it's very important that China 
learned neurosurgery. He, he is dedicated to teaching the Chinese community neurosurgery. He, he's a really wonderful man to, to spend. He's been there five years now, I think. But he's looking I've known him for 30 years, John. I know who you are. <laughs> yeah, he's dedicated. He's working on that talk. I talked to him three or four days ago. He was working on it. So that's going to be something we'll see tomorrow, a tool. And the tool will be there. You'll be there. And we'll Abby. get some other people. And Abby will be there. And, and uh, we look forward to seeing you. Any more questions uh, from the panel about uh, the tool's topic today? Or anything in anything at all, actually. Okay, John. So okay, we'll very meet good. You tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, th yeah. Thanks for stepping up to the plate there at all. I really appreciate it. And